<clears throat> this is my model of long nose. Look at her long nose. I've made her out of paper, which is called origami. I'm really good at origami, yes? I'll tell you why. My father was ambassador to Japan. In our last story, we left Astrid on the top of a cliff, shivering in the cold with her brown shawl over her shoulders, ready to go in search of the prince to keep herself warm as she walked through the bitter cold she tried singing her favorite song wherever i wander wherever i roam when i feel a warm hug i know i found my home soon Astrid walked up a mountainside and met an old hag with long grey hair and warts all over her face. She asked the old hag if she knew the way to the castle of Long Nose, east of the sun and west of the moon. The hag replied, I'm afraid I don't, dear, but you could try asking my sister. Uh, here, have a golden apple for luck. Astrid didn't know why she needed a gold apple, but she took it anyway. <laughs> Thank you. At the top of the next mountain, Astrid met the old hag's sister, who also had long grey hair and warts all over her face. Astrid asked her if she knew the way to the castle of Long Nose, east of the sun and west of the moon. The old hag's sister replied, No, I'm afraid not, my dear, but perhaps our other sister might. And here, take this gold comb for luck. <laughs> Astrid didn't know why she'd need a gold comb, but she took it anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Up the next mountain, Astrid met the old hag's sister's other sister, who also had long grey hair and warts all over her face. Astrid asked her if she knew the way to the castle of Long Nose, east of the sun and west of the moon. The old hag's sister's other sister replied, No, I'm afraid I don't, dear, and we have no more sisters for you to ask. But here, oh, have this gold spinning wheel for luck. Yeah. Astrid didn't know why she'd need a gold spinning wheel, but she took it anyway, placing the gold comb in her hair and the apple in her mouth. <coughs> Astrid walked on a little way more before at last sitting down and bursting into tears. Oh. Doesn't anyone know the way east of the sun and west of the moon? Just then, she heard a sound. Sounds like someone needs my help. When Astrid turned around, she saw, hovering above her, the face of the east wind. She could see right through it to the clouds beyond but she knew he was looking at her. And the east wind said, I could carry you there, but I would need the help of my three brothers. And he began to call them, making noises like this. I'm good at making wind noises, aren't I? And I'll tell you why. My father was a weatherman. Soon all the winds had gathered there, the east, the north, the west and the south, and they wrapped themselves around her and lifted her up high over the mountain tops, carrying her and all the gold objects to the castle of Long Nose. There they set her down and bid her good luck. Astrid looked up the tall, dark tower. 
straight up the long nose of Long Nose the Troll, seeing all the bogeys dripping out. Astrid begged and pleaded with Long Nose to see the prince, but Long Nose just laughed until she saw the gold apple. When Astrid noticed that Long Nose had seen the apple, she offered it to her in exchange for one night with the prince. Long Nose was greedy and said, Well, I'm going to marry him anyway. So she took the apple and showed Astrid to the cell of the prince. Astrid saw the prince lying in a bed fast asleep with a cup empty on his bedside. She tried to wake him up. She shook him as hard as she could. Wake up, wake up. Maybe it would be easier if you helped. Could you all put some hands on the prince and give a really good shake? Ugh, wake up, wake up. But the prince wouldn't wake up. The whole night Astrid tried in vain. The next day Astrid begged and pleaded with Long Nose if she could see the prince another time. But Long Nose just laughed until she saw the gold comb. When Astrid noticed Long Nose looking at the gold comb, she offered it to her in exchange for one more night with the prince. Long Nose replied, Well, I might as well. I'm keeping him fast asleep before our wedding day. So Long Nose took the gold comb and guided Astrid to the prince's cell. Once again, the prince lay there in a bed, fast asleep, with a cup empty on his bedside. Once again, Astrid tried to wake him up. Wake up! Wake up! We need your help again. Wake up! Wake up! But still the prince wouldn't wake up. Then Astrid noticed the cup, empty by his bedside. And she thought about what Longnose had said. I'm keeping him fast asleep before our wedding day. And Astrid suddenly had an idea. She took the cup and, using the gold spinning wheel, made a tiny hole in the bottom. Then she placed the cup exactly where it had been. The next day, Astrid begged and pleaded with Longnose the Troll to see the prince again. But Longnose just laughed until she noticed the gold spinning wheel. When Astrid saw that Long Nose had seen the gold spinning wheel, she offered it to her in exchange for one final night with the prince. Long Nose again took the gold object and showed Astrid to the cell of the prince. Once again, the prince was lying in bed fast asleep with an empty cup by his side. Astrid tried to wake him up. Are you ready? Wake up! <clears throat> Straight away the prince woke up. Astrid's plan had worked. Long Nose had been using a magic potion to keep him asleep, but this time, when she poured it into the cup, it had dripped through the hole that Astrid had made. Astrid and the prince had a huge bear hug. And Astrid was straight away reminded of her song. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, when I feel a warm hug, I know I found my home. The prince's hug was so warm, Astrid felt right at home. But how could she stop him marrying Longnose? Now it was the prince's turn to have a good idea. You dripped this magic wax on my shirt, so we can use it in a test of true love. The prince called for Long Nose and said to her, We are going to have a test. I will marry whoever can wash this wax out of my shirt. At first, Long Nose just laughed. <laughs> I'm going to marry you anyway. But then the prince said, well, I bet Astrid could do it. 
That made Longnose really jealous. And she grabbed the shirt and commanded all the other trolls to bring her a tub, some water, and some washing up liquid, and a brush. Then she began scrubbing. But as she scrubbed, the shirt got blacker and blacker. And that made Longnose angrier and angrier. She scrubbed harder and harder. But the shirt got blacker and blacker, which made Longnose angrier and angrier. And as she scrubbed faster and faster, still the shirt got blacker and blacker. And Longnose got angrier and angrier, until at last she held it up and it was so black it seemed to suck the light from the room. Longnose threw the shirt down in frustration, but laughed a little, saying, Ha! Let's see Astrid clean it now. But Astrid just came along, picked up the black shirt, and dipped it once in some cool, clean water. And when she pulled it out, straight away it was as white as snow, dazzling. Longnose began to get so angry, her head began to shake, and then her head popped off. And then all of the other trolls in the room began popping all around the prince and Astrid. Pop, 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 pop. Showering the prince and Astrid with a glittering red and green confetti. Well, you can probably guess what happened next. The prince and Astrid were married and everyone came to their wedding day. The four winds, the three hags, and Astrid's mother, father, brother, and sister. There, I tell a good story, yes? And I'll tell you why. My father was a storyteller. <laughs>